Hello everyone, GM, GM. I'm Nick from the Solana Foundation DevRel team and welcome to the Changelog. Today I've got Jacob with me. How you doing, Jacob? I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm doing amazing. Let's let's get into some commits here. Uh, the first one I wanted to shout out is this uh, commit from uh, about the CI specifically within the Agave repo. It's a updating the build script to make it incredibly much more faster, which is like real words, I swear. The build script basically makes it so everything builds like 200 times faster, which is really great, including building C, which is awesome. Yeah, that's specifically like the C compiler, right? Yep, the C compiler. So it'll build the code with the C compiler to make it so uh, it's building the Rust and C version of like the SDKs as applicable. Yeah, we, th- this is awesome. I always like to see things building faster. <laughs> oh, yeah. Saves a lot of time. Uh, another commit that we saw is verifying ELF with active feature set when att- before attempting uh, deployment. What we've seen recently in the past like couple months is that when people are deploying or they're testing their programs locally or on a DevNet, uh, they and then they go to deploy on mainnet, they were using a feature that was not activated on mainnet, but was activated on their lower environment, and they didn't realize it ahead of time. Uh, so it ran into issues, uh, and they they couldn't figure out what the errors were on mainnet. Uh, this is to help you fail fast, understand that, oh, I was using a feature that's not yet activated uh, on mainnet, and then move forward. Uh, so glad to see this. It helps the developer experience uh, greatly rather than just leaving you in the dark with uh, very vague a- errors. Oh, yeah, it'll be much more better. And speaking of really awesome things, this uh, this post from Blackiosaurus here talks about this uh, GitHub issue and work that's being in progress to update how CPI calls are actually required to uh, pass in all those additional accounts. So like if you're you know used to the typical Solana development flow, when you're sending a transaction, you have to include every single account that you interact with within the transaction. This includes all the programs. But what this new change will do once it's activated and everything when you're doing CPI calls, you actually will no longer be required to pass in program accounts. So the actual like program IDs that the CPI is calling. So you can actually remove those so you can have your transactions. You're like trimming the fat, just like Blockiosaurus said there. You're trimming the fat of all the program IDs that you're uh, executing within CPI, making it so you can have even lower, even smaller transactions uh, that you are sending to the cluster. And that way you can have more things in those transactions. Yeah, generally this limitation of what 12 to 1232 bytes on a transaction is like the biggest limitation to wh- what you can do on Solana. And so it's cool to have mm-hmm. these improvements that further expand the ability to do things within your transaction. Uh, and then we have a couple of resources of the week. I'm going to start with this one. Uh, so this one is a tool called Validate by Turbine. Uh, so it's a really cool tool, actually. I, I really have been excited for this one to be launched. Uh, the, what it does is kind of allows you to load up like different ledgers locally on your local test validator very quickly, as well as if you're trying to get a specific program out from, um, let's say you want to do open book. Uh, testing locally. You can basically give the the program ID to it. It'll load a bunch of different accounts for it um, and allow you to kind of work locally on OpenBook without having to guess all the accounts. And what's really cool is then you can export these uh, these configs uh, that basically validate JSONs for your state locally and just hand them to people on like your team or something uh, that they can then very quickly build using your same local state. Um, You can kind of think of this and what it's kind of going to turn into at some point is like a plugin system to where if you have, uh, say you want to use Metaplex, today you have to uh, load all the Metaplex accounts to do NFTs locally. In the future, you could just have this plugin of the custom validate JSON for Metaplex and you immediately can just start building. You don't have to reinvent the wheel every time. So this is a very exciting tool. I've been super uh, looking forward to this coming out. Um, if you want to try it out, go to Turbine Validate and test it. Yeah, and the next resource we've got for the week is Metaplex Core. So this is one of the new NFT standards that Metaplex has put together. Um, it's a pretty interesting take on what NFTs can be and how they work. Um, specifically, at least from my understanding, is Metaplex core NFTs do not use the SPL token program or token extensions. So 
it's uh, it's a little bit different of how NFTs work. But with that, they get a lot more flexibility of like building an NFT standard from the ground up without using an existing program. So it's it's pretty interesting. Give the docs a read. Yeah, I think it like this way of doing NFTs was probably how it should have done in the first place. Probably. But it was, <laughs> but it was very hard to do it in the early days because they were trying to figure out like, okay, how do we how do we bootstrap an NFT ecosystem very quickly? Um, this one, it's like less accounts, less space on the network, um, reduced mm-hmm. minting costs. It's really cool, but uh, it doesn't have super high adoption just yet, but definitely check it out and try using it and let us know uh, what you think about it. And then the last thing was the Stack Exchange. So we have Stack Exchange, the Stack Exchange League here. Uh, so we have our top of John, Jimmy, Ari, Joey. Uh, so it's good to see these people uh, pr- basically contributing to Stack Exchange, helping out the developers for the future. Uh, definitely, please help out, uh, like answer questions, upvote, like upvotes, and ex- especially help out on Stack Exchange. Upvote the good questions. Upvote the the good answers. And that way we can make a better experience for all developers in the future. Uh, But that closes out for this week's change log. Thank you all for joining and we will see you next week. Bye-bye.